Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1, or should I say, Stop and Go F2, late night edition. As I sit here right now, it is 20 to 2 in the morning, but it's time to talk about Formula 2. Uh, first of all, like and subscribe, that is the rules, you should all know that by now, but let's talk F2. Starting with a very interesting qualifying session, uh, Victor Martins and uh, Crawford didn't set a time in qualifying at all, both had uh, incidents there. Uh, Ollie Behrman was a big loser in qualifying as well. Basically, every time he went to set a lap, there was either a red flag or someone spun off and there was a yellow flag. Uh, he would be 16th in both races looking towards the sprint it was uh, Roman Stanek on pole Gabriel Bortoletto alongside uh, Fittipaldi on the formation lap for the sprint race was told to come back to the pit lane and start from there they had an issue but right out the gates on the uh, sprint race there was a huge crash involving both Bortoletto and Miney as well as Isaac Hadjar this brought out the safety car immediately. Uh, the big winner of that first lap, though, was Victor Martins. As I said, he was starting at the back. He was 21st on the grid. But after half a lap, up to P13, and he would repeat this again in the feature race, making big leaps. And, you know, he's got to be annoyed with himself, really, because in both races we saw... The pace that he had here this weekend, he was really, really quick in both races. But due to that qualifying mistake, it meant pretty much nothing. Um, looking at the incident at the start of the sprint, what seemed to happen was Marty was basically squeezed between Hadjar and Bortoletto as he came through the start. Personally, I think this is a racing incident. Looking at it, it just looks like one of those things that happens at the start of a race. Yes, it's very unfortunate, and yes, it was quite a scary crash as well. But personally, I feel it was a racing incident. As we'll go on to learn, the stewards see it a little bit differently. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Cordiel pits for the Super Softs on lap 6. Of course, you don't have to pit in an F2 sprint, but, you know, there was a safety car. They were quite far down. Why not try something different? Uh, safety car comes in on lap 7. Uh, Maloney has an issue and drops from P4 to P10. Looks like he had a big off, went through the gravel there. Uh, Hauger passes O'Sullivan P for P7 on lap 8. Then Colapinto passes O'Sullivan as well. That's for P8. Um, Antonelli, Vashore and Aaron all have a big crash. Um, I don't really know what happened here because Antonelli spun. No one hit him, he just spun by himself. And then I thought that he hit for sure, but looking at it again, he didn't. They were all in this big five-way battle for P2. So Antonelli spins, then for sure spins and collects Aaron as well. That brings out the safety car again. Martins, by this point, up to P8 in this race. Uh, Aaron is still in the race, but has a broken front wing. He's now down to P12 after battling for P2. Uh, Hajar is currently leading the race from Stanek behind the safety car. Safety car comes in on lap 14, and Hajar has a fantastic restart. Um, Aaron is off the track at one point and uh, goes down to P18 and then pits for that new front wing. As I said, the front wing got damaged in the crash we for sure they thought maybe they could make it last they could not uh there's a very nice battle between zayn maloney and ollie behrman for p9 that starts on lap 16 and then we have stanick versus miney for p2 on lap 17 you know kush miney has been one of the most impressive drivers in f2 so far this year consistently consistently good and i don't think his points necessarily reflect how good he has been um We'll talk about that more because I know he had the pole in Bahrain, which was then disqualified. He had a fantastic feature race. We'll talk about that in a minute, but doesn't get anything out of it. Um, back to the sprint race, though. Dirksen is out. No shocks there. Uh, Martins passes O'Sullivan P7. Um, and now um, Dennis Hauger has a fantastic move on the outside of Cushmine for P3. Behrman passes O'Sullivan for p Eight, and as we cross the line, Isaac Hajar wins the sprint race from Roman Stanek and Dennis Hauger. Ollie Behrman finally 
gets a point in F2 after the sprint, and everyone seems very happy, apart from the stewards. So, I thought the racing incident at the start was a racing incident, and I feel a lot of people thought it was a racing incident. Some people thought otherwise, including the stewards, who handed out a 10-second time penalty to Isaac Hajar, uh, costing him the win. I think he went from first to sixth uh, in that race. Interestingly, though, this is being appealed by the team, so we'll have to wait and see how that one comes from there. Also, I mentioned Oli Behrman finally getting points in F2 this, this year. No, he's not. He also got a 10-second penalty. Uh, he pushed uh, another... I can't even remember who it was, but he pushed someone out wide um, during the race, and they've decided that was worth 10 seconds, so he lost his one point. <sighs> Going into the feature race, so Roman Stanek won the uh, sprint. Let's have a look at the feature. Now we have Dennis Hauger on pole. Kimi Antonelli had a very good qualifying, and he is in P2. Antonelli very uh, aggressively pointing towards Hauger in his grid box in this race, and it was a great start for Hauger. As Stanek spins further down, Kimi Antonelli takes the lead, though, on lap one. Very exciting move there. Uh, further down the grid, Behrman has gone from P16 to P9. Victor Martins, again, P21 to P12 in one one lap, once again, showing the great pace that he could have had if he'd qualified a little bit better. The same with Behrman. Um, Hauger retakes the lead on P on lap two. Uh, Bortoletto is in the pits, has some kind of issue here, but is able to keep going again. Um, now, this is when we see tyre wear becoming a big factor of those who started on those super soft tyres. Dennis Hauger starts complaining of tyre wear on lap five. There's a, ten, there's a 10 second time penalty for Zach O'Sullivan. It was deemed that he caused the spin to uh, Roman Stanek, which is pretty open and shut if you have a look at the replay. Uh, Pepe Marci goes pretty wide um, on the track here. He's also suffering from that tyre wear, going down from P5 to P7. Kimi Antonelli is on the radio complaining about the uh, rears. Zane Maloney goes off the track. Um, the super soft tyre is really, really falling off. Uh, Dirksen is out again, but this time he was hit by O'Sullivan, who is making a collection of people he wants to hit in this race. Miney then gets past Antonelli for P2. Great move from uh, Kush Miney, who started on the harder of the compound tyres, and when that crossover period came through, he really just bossed the entire uh, grid. Really good stuff there. There is a virtual safety car, though, for uh, Dirksen's off. Gabriel Bortoletto's in the pits again and does retire the car. Virtual safety car um, ends on lap 9, and Kushmine is able to take the lead of the race. Now, on lap 10, all the super soft uh, runners all pit. That is Dennis Hauger, Kimi Antonelli, Paul Aaron, Richard Vashaw, um, uh, who else is there? Um, Zane Maloney, Oli Behrman, Victor Martins, and uh, Franco Collar Pinto. Uh, Behrman kind of gets screwed a little bit here because, as we know, the F2 pit stops are a hell of a lot slower than the ones in the F1s. They're doing a double stack like the Prima team did here. Really slows him down. He does lose a few positions there. Um, Hauger, though, when he comes out, I'm not entirely sure what happened here, but he hit the wall. Now, initially, um, Alex Brundle was saying he thought that maybe it was a real left puncture that caused him to lock up and go into the wall. But looking at the replay, I didn't think that the real left seam puncture, as it was a slow puncture, but there was definitely something wrong with the car, really unbalanced going through the corners, then has a lock up and into the wall. Quite a big crash. Thankfully, he was okay. This brings out the virtual safety car, and into the pits uh, comes uh, Hadjar and Cordiel. Isaac Hadjar, who'd been left out by his team to uh, function, do the pit stop, sorry, for Dennis Hauger, who was the lead driver of the two. So I imagine Hadjar very annoyed initially that he didn't come in, but this worked out perfectly for him. He comes in just before the virtual safety car was thrown gets a fantastic pit stop, then when the safety car comes out, he is now the lead driver of all those who have pitted to new tyres. Uh, the safety car is out for quite some time, actually, because it does take a while to fix this. A lot of gravel on the track, they have to check the barriers as well and move the car. 
Miney gets a good restart off the back of the safety car. Uh, Crawford passes Fittipaldi for P3. Uh, Hadjar gets past Taylor Barnard for P6. Taylor Barnard, the lowest of the drivers who hadn't pitted at that point, lap 16. Zane Maloney goes for a huge dive bomb but makes a mistake and ends up losing quite a few positions on lap 17. Isaac Hadjak then goes past uh, Enzo Fisipaldi for P5. Uh, and then further back, Behrman, who's having a bad time as it is, gets hit in the back by uh, Pepe Marti. Uh, otherwise, Villa Gomez is off the track on lap 19. Isaac Hadjak continues to cut through the guys who haven't made a pit stop yet, now past Stanek for P4. Paul Aaron has an incredibly aggressive overtake on Kimi Antonelli uh, for what was on the track P7, what would become P2 by the time everyone else had eventually pitted. So an incredibly important overtake, but it was massively aggressive. Apparently the stewards did take a look at it and thought there was nothing wrong with it. So there you go. The stewards, uh, stewarding decisions, I think, this weekend have been interesting, to say the least. There's been some moves that have received penalties that I thought, oh, that's a bit harsh. There's been other moves that I thought deserved bigger penalties, especially the move that we saw in F3 in the practice session, which was basically a deliberate crash, receiving quite lenient uh, penalties. And there's some uh, moves I saw where I thought, well, that deserves a penalty, and the stewards have thought, well, that doesn't deserve anything whatsoever. I imagine... This kind of ideology will continue into the F1 later on today. And if it does, I imagine huge controversy will follow too. So I look forward to that. Anyway, something they did get right, though, they gave a 10 second penalty to Pepe Marti for the collision with uh, Behrman. Very annoying for me because Behrman and um, Pepe Marti are two of my favourite guys in F2. So the fact that they're kind of uh, beefing with each other was annoying. What wasn't annoying, though, was the battle for P5 in this race at this point. Roman Stanek versus Enzo Fittipaldi versus Paul Aaron versus Kimi Antonelli. Fantastic stuff from them. You know, you have uh, Antonelli and Aaron on the newer tyres. Stanek and Fittipaldi on the older ones. Really good stuff. Stanek pushes Fittipaldi out wide onto the gravel. Aaron and Antonelli are able to pass through and go past Stanek. The battling with them has allowed uh, Zayn Maloney to catch up as well. Maloney gets past Stanek. And then Maloney is able to get past Antonelli as well, up for P6. Fittipaldi has now caught the back of this group again and gets a bit of revenge on Stanek and able to get past him as well. Stanek finally accepts defeat and pits on lap 26. Now Crawford and Correa are battling further up the grid. This is on the track for P2. Realistically, it's for nothing because they have to pit at some point and they're going to go all the way back down. Oli Behrman's weekend gets worse, doing a full 360 on the track, although he does get quite a nice round of applause from the crowd. Uh, Correa finally pits on lap 31 of 33, and Crawford is free to go ahead and fight with uh, Kush Miney for P1. Now, they are fighting for P1 on lap 31 of 33. Now, never have I seen, in the history of motorsports, two drivers... Battling for the lead of the race near the end of the race means so little. Because everyone knew that they both had to pit and this was basically meaningless. Crawford would get past him eventually, but realistically it meant nothing. They both pit on lap 32 of 33. I want to say now though, Kush Miney I think had a fantastic race. He was very unlucky with how the safety car came out and when it came out. If we had an uninterrupted race, who knows where he could have finished, but... I thought his initial start to the race and that first stint, fantastic stuff. I think they were just waiting and waiting and waiting to see if maybe they could get another safety car, do something interesting there, but it, it wasn't going to happen. So unfortunately for my there, a good drive, meaningless. But for the rest of the guys, we find the chequered flag and Isaac Hadjar does win this one, and so far it has not been taken away from him. So Isaac Hadjar does win both races this weekend. Kind of. Uh, the first one's been taken away from him, but who knows? It might be appealed and overturned. Paul Aaron in P2. 
Zane Maloney still a championship leader in P3. Kimi Antonelli just missing out on that first podium for him in P4. Uh, Miata in P5, very underrated drive for him, very much under the radar, but a P5 for him, very good. Uh, Vashore in P6, Colopinto 7th, Villa Gomez 8th, Victor Martins comes from the back to finish in P9, and Oli Behrman, he's got a point, everyone, he's in P9. 10 unless they take that one away from him as well he's done it he's got one point in formula two six points in formula one what on earth is going on in the world but let's have a look hero of f2 for this weekend i mean i've got to go with uh isaac hadja because i think he had an incredible weekend i don't blame him for the crash in the sprint race and i think he should be allowed to keep that win and to say he's done the double and to say that you know we've had three f2 weekends so far this year and in my books we've had two people who've done the double which is pretty incredible so there you go that is f2 for this weekend it's now five to two in the morning i'm gonna go to bed for an hour and a half before i wake up to see the f1 so i'll see you there too make sure to like and subscribe because i have all the coverage of the f1 later on I'll see you then. Until then, though, have a good one. Goodbye.